Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to today's class, which is called Cleansing with Om. And the reason when I was thinking, just to put this in a little bit of context before we start, because I think that it's important to, when you're doing something, to understand why you're doing it and not just be blindly kind of going, all right, well, I'll just do it, to give it a deeper meaning. So when we say, well, put it this way, a lot of the time, um, a lot of yoga that you're doing um, is cleansing, detoxifying, unraveling, unblocking. And basically the reason for that is that many of us through our lifetime and lifetimes have collected lots of thoughts and emotions that become stuck in our bodies. And what we're doing, part of the wonderful gift of yoga, <laughs> of which there are so many, is to unlock the energy pathways and to unlock, you know that feeling when you uh, are feeling really stiff and then you do some exercise or some yoga and you go, oh, I feel like, oh, I feel really nice and supple. And that's because what's happened is that blocked energy is now cleared and you're able to flow. It's a bit like a, a current, an electric current going along a wire or a, whatever it's called these days. And if it's blocked, it just, you know, can't continue on its journey. Or, or, or when in a little bit more of an extreme of that, when you have something like backache or you know that kind of tension in here is basically where the energy is blocked and it's trying to push through and just like that it's creating tension there so that's one of the reasons why many yoga practices are focused on this clearing cleansing um, and unblocking to allow our energy to circulate efficiently and allow us in our physical bodies to feel lighter and brighter and happier and in our meridian bodies um, good health as energy uh, oxygen and blood etc is able to be circulated throughout your organs and um, meridian lines okay so that's Mickey's little lesson of the day so what what this class the short class is going to focus on in terms of cleansing is cleansing with OM, the universal sound, the universal mantra, which I'm sure many of you have either practiced before, if you've done yoga before, or um, yoga in a studio or online, or you've practiced with me, we do that a lot in my classes, or you've just heard of it, maybe you've seen it somewhere, or somebody, you know, taking the mick out of someone who's being um, cultivating a spiritual practice by going, oh, om and all that. But look, this, this is what I'm talking about. Preconceived ideas that get locked in your mind, locked in your emotions, locked in your thought processes, preconceived about ideas about something. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do a classic sun salutation flow. We're going to go through the sun salutation 10 times and that's just to unblock the energy pathways tire out the physical body if you like so that it's able to sit still because when your physical body's feeling a bit oh, oh, oh it's very difficult to sit still let's face it um so it's a bit like running around in the playground at break at school you need to run around in the play playground at break so that you're able to go into the maths class and sit still uh, for an hour and a half and listen to some really boring maths teacher but we're not doing that right now you're listening to me and we're doing some yoga so things things to get ready one mat one mat like that and something to sit on at the end to do our chanting for me I sit on this block yeah which is it's a very hard block and it just helps to elevate me off the floor to tilt my pelvis forward so that my back's nice and straight and I have this nice straight energy uh, shaft, if you like, uh, my spine. But for those of you who don't have a block or who are not used to sitting on blocks, 
just grab a chair, just a regular chair, exhibit A. Uh, something that's quite structured, not that you're going to lean back on it, but that's got a nice firm seat. I don't recommend when you're practicing meditation or seating postures to sit on cushions. And the reason for that is that really the cushion has very little support, very little support. It's much better, in my opinion, to sit on a hard surface because that hard surface just helps to sit you up. You don't have that sinking feeling and we don't want that sinking feeling. So that's a little hot tip for you. When you're practicing meditation, sit in a chair, like a dining room chair or something, or a stool, something that's hard, or a little hard block like this. Maybe if you're a bit more used to sitting in that posture. Okay, so that's that. So let's get ready to go. So mat's out, standing at the top of the mat. We're just gonna jump straight into it because uh, the purpose of this doing sun salutation 10 times is to just tire out our body, if you like, tire it out, uh, unlock those energy pathways in those, in a, and repetition, you know, training, 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 repetition to really master this classic sequence. There's no point, um, there's not no point, of course, there's a point to everything, but in traditional yoga, one would be learning the same sequence. If you think about traditional Ashtanga yoga, it's one sequence repeated over and over and over again every time you practice without all this fancy sort of backflipping kind of stuff that people do in vinyasa yoga in a lot of Western studios as we've westernized that. But we are gonna go for a classic today. So standing at the top of your mat, and just one more thing before, because I love talking, uh, is that this short sequence, you can fast forward me at the beginning once you've listened to that once, <laughs> is that you can do this every day because it honestly won't take long. I'm going to time it now. So standing at the top of your mat. And when I say standing, I mean really look down at your feet. When we talk about standing, it's not just standing at the bus stop, but like whatever on the phone. This is really rooting down through the feet. Really extend and spread your toes so that you stretch them. Good yogic practice, bit of homework for you. Stretching the toes. Move the weight very subtly forward and very subtly backwards, left and right, to just get a sensation of the whole of the sole of your foot. Lock that sole of the foot down so you're actually pressing down and it's through pushing down into the earth, onto the floor, that you have this feeling of elongating that you can lift up. So pressing down through the feet and lifting up from the arches of your feet, your inset. Imagine you could put those little, you know, those little um, foam things that you get in trainers sometimes or you buy them in the shop. You can slot them in there. So you have this lifted arch. And when you lift that arch, you start to line up and switch on the calves, the thighs, the back of the thighs, your glute muscles, your bum, lift up and very slightly tilting your tailbone under, very slightly. So it's not this, it's just very slightly in order to lift up, have the sense of lifting up from your pu pubic bone. I always use the analogy like you're trying to zip into last year's jacket. So, and it's a little bit tight. So you're zipping up through the front. The, the ribs are tucked in so you're not flaring. It's not this shape, it's this shape. So we want to become like this staff, like this powerful reed that's strong, that's grounded down into the earth, but it's also flexible enough to be able to move. Isn't that lovely, that analogy? I've just realized my mat is too close to the wall. So inhaling from here, you're standing this way, I'm just showing you. Inhaling, extend the fingers, and the same thing about the toes. Don't just like flap those out. It's not this, it's really extending energy so that we start to, the purpose of this is to 
unblock energy pathways. So you really need to switch your body into those pathways. Bring the palms together, bring the palms to face each other overhead and really lift up. So you're lifting up again, unblocking that waistline. Look up at those two palms. You're still tucked in here. Look up at those two palms and connect the palms together. Extend once more on the inhale and bring those biceps back towards the ears as you look up at the ceiling and creating openness in the chest and a lovely flex in the spine. Inhale once again and when you exhale, extend the arms out, activating the fingers, bend the knees as much as you need to when you get halfway and place the hands on the floor. The hands, the fingers and the toes lined up parallel to each other. So bend your knees as much as you need to to make that happen so that your, your tummy is touching the top of your thighs. Extend your right leg back. Extend your left leg back. You're in plank. Look down. Stay looking down so the top of your crown is facing forward. Bend your knees. Tailbone. Moving your bum towards the back of your heels. So the weight is moving backwards. You're up on the balls of your feet. Extend the tailbone, which is this here. Lift it up towards the ceiling and then back to the back of your mat. Inhale, exhale, one. So don't be tempted to push and extend through so you're locking your knees and you think, oh God, I'm really getting something here. That's not the purpose of this posture. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. You're making this triangle pose shape so that your ears are parallel to your biceps. Your head is not threaded through. Three, four, and then slowly walk yourself to the front of the mat. Bring your toes behind your wrists. Bend the knees as much as you need to and fold forward. Inhale, exhale, roll up. Inhaling at the top, bring the shoulders up to the ears. Squeeze the shoulder blades back together behind you and your palms face forward, Tadasana. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Excellent. Inhale, extend. Same thing, arms out. Extend the arms and the fingers out. Palms are facing each other overhead, look up and then connect the palms and then bring the biceps back towards the ear and then extend up towards the ceiling and then over to open up the chest. Inhale once more, exhale, swan dive down. As you come down to halfway, bend the knees, place the fingers Next to, line the fingers and the toes up, and this time step back left. Step back right, hold it. One, two, bend the knees, bum comes towards the heels, extend up to downward facing dog. Let's take three breaths here. Inhale, exhale, one. So again, same thing. Be mindful that the weight is going backwards and it's not going forwards like this. Inhale, exhale, two. So you're making this nice triangle, quite angular position. Three, walk to the front of the mat. Bend the knees as much as you need to roll up. Inhale here at the top, squeeze the shoulders up towards your ears and then roll them back so the shoulder blades come together at the back. Tadasana. Let's take two breaths. Really lovely deep breathing, doing this very simple, very simple. That's has done two. Inhale up, look up at the space in between your hands, connect the palms, extend the fingers up towards the heel ceiling and then back. Inhale once again, exhale, swan dive down. This is number three. Connect the palms to the floor, step back right, step back left, plank. Three breaths, one two, 
three, bend the knees, bum goes to the heels, extend up, inhale, exhale, one, two, three, take the right foot off the mat and step that foot forward, back knee down, inhale, rise up, right knees forward, exhale, heart centre, twisting round to the right, and when you twist, really twist, take that um, belly button with you, extend and put the elbow, the tip of the elbow, not the bicep, the tip of the elbow against the knee, twist round to the right. So when you're twisting round to the right, make the target is to get those thumbs by the sternum. Two, three, exhale, centre, frame the front foot, Step back, downward facing dog. Three breaths, one, two, three, walk forward. Feet are behind the wrists, roll up. That's number three done. Inhale, extend, look up at the space in between your hands, then connect them. Bring the biceps back to the ears, extend back. Maybe you can go a little bit further. Inhale at the top and exhale, swan dive down, bend to halfway. Place the fingers parallel to the toes. Step back left, step back right. You're in plank. Three breaths. One, two, three. Bend at the knees, extend up to downward facing dog. Left leg this time. So bring the left foot off the mat. Step it forward, back knee down. Inhale, bring the palms up overhead. Exhale to heart centre, very good. Twist, so when you twist, you're taking that belly button round to the left. Another big inhale, and as you exhale, bring that elbow to the outside of the knee, twist round to the left. One, two, three, frame that front foot, step back to downward facing dog. Inhale, one, two, three, walk forward, toes behind the wrist, roll up, very good, inhale, extend the arms up, bring the palms together, bring the palms back, put the arms back to the ears, look up, open up your chest, inhale, exhale, bend the knees at halfway, palms come, fingers come down next to the toes, this time it's, num it's right, we're on number five, Step back, left, plank, two, three breaths, bend the knees, bum to heels, extend up, downward facing dog, one, two, three, lift the right foot off, step the right foot forward, keep the left knee off the ground, come up, high lunge, rotate on the back foot, warrior two, one, two, three, so in warrior two, if you're a beginner, and we've all been beginners, um, this is very challenging because we don't do a lot of this in our normal daily life, which means using our, our using different muscles, a different sense of strength to hold these arms up. We often tend to do this. So let those shoulders slide down the back and same thing, extend through the fingers, Inhale deeply, exhale, rotate back round, frame the front foot, straight back to downward facing dog. One, two, three, walk forward, bring the to toes behind the heels, roll up. Oh yes, this is starting to feel good now. Look at the space in between your hands, connect the palms, extend up and back. Inhale at the top, exhale as you come down, bend the knees halfway, fingers to the floor, step back left, step back right, plank, number six, two, three, bend the knees, tailbone rises, downward facing dog, inhale, exhale, one, two, bend the left knee, left foot's coming forward, keep the right knee off the mat, come up to high lunge, come up to high lunge, Rotate on the back foot, bring those hips, bring those hips with you with their hands. Extend out, warrior two. One, 
So when you're in warrior two, deeply bending in the knee. How about we all go a little bit further there? Two, three, and then rotating on that back foot. So both feet face forward, framing that front foot straight back to downward facing dog. One, two, three, walk forward. Toes are behind the wrist, roll up. Extend up, look at the space in between the hands, connect, connect the palms, biceps back to ears, inhale at the top, exhale, let's go all the way there, number seven now. Step back right, <coughs> step back left, plank. Bend the knees, downward facing dog, right foot off. Let's extend that right foot back. Push back into the heel as you step that foot forward. High lunge. <laughs> Rotate round. Warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Extend forward with that right hand. Triangle. Look up at the left hand. Two. Three. Back up to standing. Rotate round to the front. Frame the front foot, downward facing dog. One, two, walk forward, roll up. Inhale, extend up into the fingers, close the palms together, stretch back up and open as you exhale down, bend the knees at halfway, number eight. Step back left, step back right, plank. Bend the knees, downward facing dog. Left leg off the mat. Extend the left leg back and step that left foot forward. High lunge, hands on hips. So when you bring your hands on your hips, it really is a helpful guide to take those hips with you round to the side. Extend the arms out, warrior two. Deeply bending in the knee again, a little bit further. Then straighten that front leg, extend forward, triangle, one, two, three, come back up to standing, rotate round to the front, frame the front foot, step back down, facing dog, one, two, stay focused, three, walk forward, toes are behind the wrist, roll up, extend up into the hands, extend up into the, the fingers, bring the bicep back, Look up at the ceiling and then exhale down. Bend the knees at halfway. We're on number nine. <laughs> step back right. Step back left plank. Inhale. <clears throat> exhale. Drop. Drop the knees down. Drop the front of the feet down. And lower down to cobra. So that's dropping the thighs, the hips, keeping those elbows tucked tight and then inhale deeply, open up the chest, exhale, bum to heel, downward facing dog, inhale, one, two, walk forward, uh, toes behind the wrist, inhale, up, boom, Extend up into the fingers, look up at the hands, bring the bicep back to your little back bend as you extend up towards the ceiling. Exhale down, bend the knees at halfway. F, palms on the floor, step back left, step back right. Be step back left, step back right. Bend the knees, sorry. F feet on the floor. And as you come down, the elbows, I'm going to do this one, this show how tight those elbows are. As you bring the thighs down, the hips down, extend the, the uh, chest forward and up. Inhale, one, two, three, back, bum to heel, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, one, two, walk forward, roll up. Squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and palms come forward. Tadasana. You're back where you were at the very beginning, standing. So just close out the eyes and let your heart rate and your breath settle down. 
Let's take five breaths. Inhale, exhale, one. Through the nose. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, five. Very, very good. Excellent. As you're watching this on record, you could take a little bit of extra time to get into your seating posture, but I would recommend you just go straight on into it with me now. So either sitting on a chair, if you're sitting on a chair, just be very upright. So you're not leaning back. You're just using the chair where your, your, your bum, get your bum right back to the back of the chair and sit up nice and still and straight. I'm going to sit on a block. So as I said at the beginning, wouldn't recommend cushions. They're just, there's no support in cushions and they just encourage you to, they just encourage you to slouch, in my opinion. So cleansing with all. We're going to do, there's three parts to this cleanse. The first part is verbal. So uh, that's, we're going to uh, chant on seven times together that's verbal that's the lowest vibration because it's on the physical level second round is i'm going to chant om and you're going to chant om but silently in 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 your head so you're chanting but you're not making a sound that's level two so we're going up the ladder and then top level is i'm going to chant om and you're just going to be receptive. You're going to just let go. For the third round, the tip of your tongue, for the second and the third round actually, the tip of your tongue to the top of your palate and then you move it back towards the back of the palate to just complete this circle, your orb of light. So, um, first one is Verbal. So we're going up the ladder of vibration, yeah? This is good. This is great. It's a great way to start your day or finish your day. Doesn't matter. Okay, and so sitting nicely, get your sitting pot seat. You're all ready to go. Hands. Hands can be just palms up, being receptive or, or resting on your uh, knees, on your thighs. Shoulders nice and relaxed. You know, you'll have that feeling like, do you see what I mean? What I'm saying at the beginning is you have that lovely feeling. So let's just go straight into it. So we're going to do it seven times on my lead. Inhaling. Om. So in this next round, I'm going to uh, do the chanting and you're going to be chanting silently in your, in your head, if you like. So the tip of your tongue, just place, put your tip of your tongue to the top of your mouth and then move it back. If you've not done this, move it back to the back of your palate, to that soft bit there at the back. If you haven't done this before, it might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but I really encourage you to cultivate this for your meditation, your chanting practice. Um, uh, let's go. So just be receptive. 
final round um, just for you I'm going to do the chanting for you to just be receptive to the sound to let go of any repetition you're not joining in you're just letting that sound uh, permeate and take you up that ladder to the next level to the top level Om. Slowly, just move your fingers, move your toes, and just slowly slide back into your physical self. So coming down from that high, coming down the ladder now. Slowly come down, come back into your physical self, which you might feel a bit, uh, oh God, I don't want to come back but you have to come back. You have to slide back in. But now that you're back, you can go around the rest of your day or your evening with a sense of perhaps heightened awareness. And that heightened awareness can help you deal with um, any situation that might come your way or any um, helping others helping you just throughout your tasks and have a sense of who you really are. And when you know who you really are, you really can have a further sense of how can I live? And it's these practices in the reason that I'm doing these practices again on uh, my YouTube channel is because there is a lot of 
um, you could call it uncertainty, but there is a very um, unbalanced uh, vibration at the moment going on, and it's not just here in my in my world. I live in London. It really is globally. There's a lot happening, and it causes confusion and unbalanced and without really cultivating a spiritual practice and I say this to everyone you'll never find inner peace because everything else is just really a sticking plaster and everything else is associated with this world with this sense of living and why we practice yoga and meditation and the sacred arts is to understand that this is only one level of being and that there are other levels of being that are up the ladder and have a deeper meaning and can can ha help us have a deeper meaning to our daily lives and if you'd like to know more about that you can email me you can get in touch uh, please subscribe to my channel my channels there's lots happening on them right now lots of ha things happening in the yoga world and there is a wonderful retreat in January in Norfolk in England, southeast of England, um, which is just going to be the most wonderful, wonderful weekend. It's the fourth one I've done since uh, the whole pandemic broke out and it really is a further exploration of who we really are, how we can live and a break from the normal day-to-day -day, um, circumstances so that you're able to um, it makes it easier to just step away from a lot of that negative vibration and remember who you really are please join me please get in touch have a wonderful uh, day evening Bye.